uh, electricity and gas because these recommendations will affect the, the use of electricity or gas. Uh, the salient point here is that for, for electricity, we are suggesting um, for your master plans, for your facilities, uh, the use of uh, central uh, plants to provide the heating and cooling for your facilities. Uh, that's a, a way to optimize the use of energy, in this case, electricity. Um, for gas, um, one of the things that you may remember from uh, previous graphs here, um, Lenny College and uh, Mary College both have uh, a system we call 100% outside air, which means brings a lot of outside air during winter, and that creates a lot of gas usage. So um, we are going back to the board and recommending that we install controls to reduce that minimum outside air to the required standards, you know, by ASRAE or uh, DSA. And controlling all this outside air, we bring it into the classroom. Uh, for the Lenny College, uh, we are suggesting a uh, cogeneration uh, fuel cell that will help us reduce the uh, gas usage. Uh, we produce electricity and we uh, produce hot water for the swimming pool. We also like to recommend the use of uh, solar thermal, solar collectors, pretty much. Um, uh, also, we like to look into geothermal energy. Those are the recommendations for uh, infrastructure. In terms of re renewable energy, uh, we are uh, recommending about four megawatts of uh, PV systems. Uh, this will be uh, either parking canopies or parking uh, or ground mount uh, systems. Uh, but with a limited amount of parking, we need to use the roofs to install the other uh, four megawatts. Uh, we're also looking into small uh, wind turbines. Uh, little turbines we can install on top of uh, some of the buildings. Uh, Lenny Tower is one, is one example. And again, um, geothermal and solar thermal, as, as those are the other renewable energy resources. Um, lead recommendations, and again, um, we like to uh, mention that we uh, we think that in the future, LEED is not going to be necessary to certify buildings because all the new codes, construction codes, will have all those elements built into them. Uh, we can save some money by not hiring consultants and things like that. Um, the, the preferred method to de uh, deliver these projects, uh, uh, we uh, our, we, we would like to suggest design build as the preferred method to deliver these projects that give us uh, that give us a lot of advantages over the traditional design specs. Um, and one of them, for example, is that we can guarantee prices. So meaning there is no change orders. You get one price and that's it. There won't be there won't be any more change orders, any more additional cost. Uh, SPDI projects and um, uh, the risk uh, rel uh, relies on the developer, not the district. Um, there is a few uh, financing, op financing options that we also bring to the table as, as Chevron. Uh, one of them is uh, tax exempt lease. Obviously, the first one, bond funding, is uh, from the district. But we have uh, access to capital to provide tax exempt leases <coughs> or uh, something called TALP. Uh, we also can look into a PPA, a power purchase agreement, to deliver some of these uh, especially renewable energy projects. Um, lastly, this is uh, the uh, Mary College. These are the possibilities of, uh, for solar uh, PV systems. Uh, we are looking at the hillside behind the uh, uh, football uh, Field, and we're also looking at parking lot C. This is the last one. And um, lastly, I just wanted to show you uh, some of the uh, lead credits that we, uh, we are recommending, and we think uh, uh, 
if you still like to pursue lease certification, it is possible, and these are some of the credits that we'll be looking at. And uh, that is uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. You have any questions? Trustee Ewan. Um, actually, I do have him. Um, I can forward to anybody who may like it. I don't have him in my presentation because uh, I was given 10 minutes, so I didn't want to go through all of them. However, we have, uh, we have tons of pictures we would like to share. We would love to share those pictures with anybody interested. Um, in many cases, we actually have improved the lighting because we add a lot of uh, lighting under the parking canopies. Um, also, one thing is uh, we have about three or four designs already pre-approved by DSA, so they're ready to go. Uh, once you approve it, it takes about a week to get a permit. Uh, they're being pre-approved by DSA, so yeah, it's, it's a very interesting thing. I, I did actually have one other broad question. It deals with costs. So uh, obviously when you do a 30% reduction, of your energy use through conservation and insulation and efficiency and so forth, you're going to reduce your, your immediate bill. When you look at the overall cost of this thing, if you say, all right, over a over a 30-year period, over a 10-year period, you're going to you're going to zero out your your uh, greenhouse gas emissions. You're going to expense expense that over a longer period of time. Uh, what does this actually cost you, or do you actually not? Uh, it, does it not cost you in the long run? How do you, how do you uh, talk about creating budgets to pay for such a thing? Um, l let me see if I understand your question. Uh, uh, the energy reduction we are suggesting or we think is possible at the district 30 um, percent, you can, you can uh, use the money to finance the project, and it's called performance contracting. And it's, it's a well-known... Uh... Let me try to restate. Say I'm somebody who doesn't care about the state of the climate at all. I don't care about climate change at all. I care about just uh, the Money. bottom line dollars. Mm -hmm. And I'm worried about that. How do you uh, relax me about the <laughs> dollar costs in, involved here? Well, I'm not sure if I can relax you, but let me try to... <laughs> Well, give it your best shot. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about both of these issues. I think for some people, they're more concerned about the dollar issues than the climate change issues. Uh, I'm very concerned about those, but uh, uh, so. I, I understand your, that question now. Give it your best shot. I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Uh, well, obviously, reducing energy um, generates savings, right? We're talking about uh, money only. 30% may reduce the cost of the district. Uh, you actually spend about $3 million right now. So let's assume you're reducing 30%. It's about uh, $900,000. Um, $900,000 can pay for a lot of uh, maintenance, can go to your general fan fund. You can do uh, you know, whatever you want with that money. Or you can use that money to pay for the project. So you don't have to get bond money allocated from your master facility plan to do the energy infrastructure. You can use the money to pay a financing company. We don't, we don't get into the financing. We bring a third party company like Bank of America or somebody else. They lend you money to build your project and you pay the bank with the savings. So you don't, you don't use the bond money that you already have, and, and I, I can see you got uh, $1 billion in infrastructures in the next 15 years. So basically, uh, you save money, and with that money you pay the, the infrastructure. Is, is that something that you will be interested in? Okay, so uh, here are some figures that I've seen, and maybe, maybe these will be consistent with your understanding. When I've looked at costing for solar thermal, uh, installations on swimming pools, for example. Uh, I've seen figures that tell me that they pay themselves back uh, roughly in five to eight years, and sometimes even less than that. 
uh, when I've seen PV installation figures